how will that fit in the programme? Very well, Mr Chair. Okay, so 10.40, military time. 10.40. <laughs> Thank you. 10.40, so can I just remind can I just remind you that we are now being live streamed uh, and my not not live recorded, being recorded uh, and that my comments at the beginning stand right Debbie over to you. Tina Koto Katoa. Thank you very much, Debbie Highland, Finance Manager. Um, we're pleased to present our draft annual report for the year ended 30th of June 2021 to the Risk and Assurance Committee uh, for your review. Uh, the document includes circa 200 pages of content um, and respectfully our draft results for the year ended um, 30th of June, uh, a surplus of $5.5 million um, against the budgeted deficit of $5.6 million. We've focused our investment, our operating expenditure of $141 million um, to achieve our four community outcomes and the community well-beings. And our operating expenditure is approximately $1.1 million lower than the budget. We've also um, been able to achieve operating revenue of $146.8 million. This is 10 million higher than our budget. And primarily that's uh, because of central government funding, uh, stimulus funding, focused on the uh, risk and resilience and climate change initiatives, as well as the Jobs for Nature program. We've delivered capital expenditure of $27.6 million, our third highest um, in the history of the Regional Council. Um, however, this was significantly impacted by COVID um, and the budget of $51 million. I'd also like to hand over at this point uh, to either Javan and Tobias or Tobias um, to highlight these uh, KPI results. Thank you, Javan. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, so overall for the year, we achieved the vast majority of our non-financial performance results. Some particularly uh, positive signs were an increase in the number of priority biodiversity sites that were managed. Uh, a resource consents uh, processing team had its best ever on time performance as well as its best ever customer satisfaction at the same time as dealing with a record number of consents received and processed. Even when we failed to meet some of our performance goals, so for example, the burner replacement in the Rotary Air Shed, that was not necessarily a negative because in that case, we simply ran out of burners to replace for the most part, reaching saturation of the market. We also had some extremely positive signs with our navigational aids, which ensure the safe navigation on the waterways around the Bay Plenty with the highest ever result recorded for the quality of those navigation aids. There were a couple of areas where we failed to achieve our performance targets. One was public transport patronage, where um, the aftermath of COVID lockdowns late last year saw um, a relatively slow recovery. So although our 2021 result was significantly up on 1920, it still fell about 300,000 short of our um, target for 2021 but we did have a particularly high um, rate of patronage during quarter four, where we had our highest quarter in four years for the Tauranga Urban and School Services. We also had a, um, a slight under delivery against the financial budget for our rivers and drainage replacement. But part of that, again, was due to delivering a whole sequence of works well under budget. So when adjusted for that, the, the underperformance against that um, percentage of maintenance, repairs and renewals would have been much closer to the budget itself because the actual capital works uh, that were um, forecast were actually delivered. Thank you. Thank you, Javan. Um, in addition to the parent only results which for Bay of Plenty Regional Council, which I've presented, um, staff have also prepared consolidated accounts, draft consolidated accounts. Uh, the group has, Bay of Plenty Regional Council group has uh, recorded a net profit after tax of 131 million, 85 million of that is attributed to council. And of that, uh, the key side have paid $31 million um, in cash, $33 million in cash dividend to the Regional Council. Um, I'd like at this point, uh, the audit is ongoing. 
Uh, we do uh, hope to adopt the annual report on the 10th of November at the full council meeting. Um, and I have here Audit New Zealand, uh, Leon and Anton uh, to talk through the effectiveness and efficiency of the audit process and any issues that they are seeing uh, arising from that. Thank you. Welcome to the meeting and welcome to Anton earlier. Nice to see you and that's a lovely picture you've got behind you, Leon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a South African high, uh, high felt picture. But uh, uh, we're now in New Zealand, and uh, so we're talking about the audit and how this final audit is progressing, which has been going really well. Um, and as Debbie said, we are still aiming to, to meet all these deadlines to be able to, uh, to complete the audit before your adoption in about the second week of November. So that's definitely where we're aiming still. Uh, the audit isn't completed, but overall I'm feeling quite positive. Um, I'm not going to talk too much more and rather take any questions that you may have. So are there any questions for Leon? I don't have any myself at the moment, uh, uh, as long as we're getting an assurance that there is. Can you give us any time and frame in which you will complete your report? Absolutely, Mr. Chair. So uh, we've got uh, this week to complete and then next week, which is a short week. And then we've got a week for final reviews and, and wrap up of the audit. And that's what we're working towards. Um, there are a few things outstanding, some of them with our technical team. And, you know, I um, raised or mentioned to you earlier this year the shortage of auditors. Unfortunately, that impacts not only my team and, well, all audit teams but also our technical team. And that's the only risk at this stage that I can see that that can, can lag a bit, um, but we'll keep you posted. Leon, what are the technical issues? So we've got uh, one specific one around um, uh, SSP, performance reporting. So that's about the bus pat uh, patronage. Um, and it's something that could have been raised probably a bit earlier because all regional councils work through the same thing. So um, Anton is working closely with our technical team to see how we can get across the line with that one. Uh, so I know some of the other regional councils have already uh, completed that. So we should be able to get there. But as I say, these things do take a little bit of time. Anton, then we have a possible prior error. Is that on the Reno? Uh, Reno bond. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah, it's just um, a classification. So last year, the, the bond that was paid was shown as a current liability, but um, our understanding that's only um, that's due to be repaid in 2035. So in, in the whole process, that was missed when it was shown as a current liability, where it should have been non-current. So it's just moving that um, out uh, from current to non-current, but the overall liability doesn't change. I have a conversation going on here, so I'm just waiting for that to finish. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to argue back to um, Leon. Sorry, uh, members, about the side conversation. Leon, the patronage one is this an opinion issue? If we, if we got, have we got? challenges de demonstrating to you enough evidence to support the numbers or the likes? Is that the issue that we're facing here? Yes, that's the issue. Um, but as I say, because there are quite a number of regional councils using the same system, the same uh, uh, measure, that yeah. some of them have already got across the line. So yeah. we believe it's not an issue, but it, uh, and we should get across the line this year. But please right. note the word of the, the use of the word should um, until I get that technical clearance. I can't uh, state that for, for a fact. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? Well, I therefore <clears throat> move that we um, receive the report on page 49. I propose, Bruce. Yes, I'm sorry, and I second it. So, Mr. Chairman, that is the draft annual report review mm -hmm. that we're doing now. So, which is um, page 41. Is that 
page three. Oh, no, so it's the uh, super cover. supplementary item and separate cover. We're doing the um, management oh. report for LTP after this one. So we went straight into the annual report. Oh, okay. Sorry. So which page? Do we have, do we have it? Page three. Oh, I've got it. Yeah. Supplementary. supplementary. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> You've probably all read this. Um, I have. I've got a chocolate fish out of it too. I'm pleased to know. Virtual. For the Mr. member, for the benefit of the Yes. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, um, a, a clarification, if you will. Uh, when may we ask questions about the draft annual report content? Now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, two, two issues, if I could. Um, the FTE count for the council, um, could you just tell me whether I've got my sums right? We appear to have increased by um, over 85 FTEs since last year, is that correct? Could you give us a page you're referring to, Paula? Oh, look, I'm Ooh. sorry, I, I, it's, I can't, <laughs> uh, but no, it's in the... Debbie, Debbie will yeah. know. Thank you very much for the opportunity to provide a response. If it's okay, I'll uh, just pull up the FTE number and then revert back in about a, one minute or so. Oh, that, look, that's fine if, if um, at any stage. And Debbie, my next question was, have we recorded the port of Tauranga director's fees appropriately? I just see that the Rob McLeod, his direct, I'm taking it that they, those are a combination of his Quayside and Port Director's fees. Has that been recorded appropriately? Uh, I would have to say yes, but I, again, I've, um, until the audit is um, completed, uh, that's got to be verified by Audit New Zealand. Okay, thank you. So, thank, thank you, Mr Chairman. Okay, so, so <clears throat> I now move that we receive that report and that's been seconded already. All yes. those in favour of receipt, raise your hand. Thank you. The draft annual report is received. Right now, moving on to item 8.5 Audit New Zealand Final Management Report on Long Term Plan. Debbie. Thank you very much. This is a procedural um, matter um, at hand. So uh, Council adopted the long-term plan on the 24th of June uh, 2021. For, um, the long-term plan covered uh, LTP 2021 to 30, 2031. Um, we're really pleased. We obviously received an unmodified audit opinion um, and with the attached um, LTP management letter to close off that process. Um, and we obviously have Audit New Zealand here, um, but overall it was um, a, a really great result. Thank you. Questions, comments? Congratulations. To <laughs> so the team, the team, the team have had a really hard time. I, I know Matt's either telling Porky's or he's telling me the team have had a, a really hard time in putting all this together. So, Jeremy, yeah, take it back to the team. We appreciate the hard work that's been put into all of this. Uh, no, right, no, no, he. Yeah. Thank you. All, uh, it's moved, been moved and seconded. All those raise your hands. So really, thank you. Right. Um, so through you, Chair, I've got the response to Councillor Thompson's queries. Um, at, at the moment, uh, budgeted FTE uh, for last year's annual plan was 263 staff, um, and that's up uh, 30 positions on the prior year. Thank you, Chair. 30 positions. 463 up from 434, sorry, and 30, uh, yeah, 30 yeah. positions. Aroha mai, thank you. Can, can I just make the point that when I'm re reviewing this outside committee, uh, we always look at the, the total figure of consultants, temporaries and FTEs together, uh, because that gives a far more meaningful uh, measure of what we're spending in, in, in the employment area. So the, the question would really be, how did that total figure compare to the total figure 
last year. And I'm not uh, looking for an instant. No. Resources. So through you, Chair, um, just off the, I believe in the covering report, um, I'd noted that our total budget um, for staff, contractors and consultants, um, our actuals are basically on budget. Um, there are some over expenditure last year in terms of staffing, but there was some savings in respect of the work that we outsourced to contractors. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, and that's always been the case, in fact, and that's why we've always got to look at the three things together uh, when we're reviewing that. Right, um, so on to item 8.6. The draft annual report review. Debbie, you're still Would in the you, We just we did that oh, before. Thank you. Oh, Which one is Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you've just done the LTP report. So was that moved? Yes, we've done. Yes. yes. So, so we've we finished. Completed the process on the agenda. Yes. Oh, well, my, my run sheet is a bit odd. Um, Miranda, it's not your fault, it's mine. Right. Okay, everybody. Well, I therefore move that we, oh, first of all, I'd say thank you to Leon and Anton for coming on board. Uh, we know how difficult it has been for you. Uh, all we can say is we look forward to your, your best efforts to make sure we get through on time, but it is what it is. So thank you, everybody. Um, we will be continuing the, the workshop downstairs in, a, in about 10 minutes. So thank you, everybody. That concludes this meeting. So one for the workshop. Thank you.